In this tutorial, you'll learn how to build a beautiful double nav bar with logo and icons, including responsiveness with a hamburger menu. It also has an awesome animation. You will also learn some modern design tricks. You can find the final code of this project at the GitHub link in the description. So if you get stuck, you can go to the final code and compare that with your own code. Let's get started. All right, so I have set up a simple project here. I just have an empty HTML file and this is what it looks right now. This is what we want to create, so let's get started. So I only have this HTML file and this logo, which is an SVG. So the first step would be to write HTML and in Visual Studio Code, you get three suggestions. We want the second one. I'm going to press tab and it will give me an HTML boilerplate. I'm going to change this into something like double navbar. And we're going to link to a couple of things here. So we're going to have a style sheet. That's going to be our own style sheet. And we're also going to write some JavaScript because we're going to have a um, hamburger menu, right? So you need some JavaScript for that. So I'm going to say script source is script.js. Now, if you link to JavaScript file here in the head, it's best to also use the defer attribute so it doesn't block parsing the rest of the page. In the past, people added this to the, to the end of the body, but this is the modern way of doing it. Right, so it's really important that you have mastered the, the underlying fundamentals if you want to be a front-end or maybe you already are a front-end developer. Those are both CSS as well as JavaScript. I have courses on them. You can find the links in the description. Definitely check them out if you want to take it to a professional level. So let's create those files. It's going to be a style.css file and a script.js file. So now we have all the files here that we're going to need. Um, I'm going to close the sidebar here, side, sidebar here by holding Control b and then we're going to need some other things as well. For example, we're going to use the inter font here. I, I really like this font. It's very popular. It's my go-to font. So you can go to fonts.google.com and search for inter. And it's actually quite similar to Roboto. So we have light, regular, medium, semi-bold, and bold. And then you need to click this icon and it will show you how to include that. So this is the stuff that we need to copy and paste into our HTML. I'm going to do that here on top of our own style sheet here. So then I'm going to hold shift alt F to format the file. So the first two links here that you get are just for optimization. And then the third one is what, what will actually make a network request to include the, the font, right? So it's really the third one that you actually need. So I'm going to close this. Now we're, we're also going to need some icons here, right? So you can see this, this phone and email icon. Those need to come from somewhere. Now the most popular library for icons is called Font Awesome. So you can Google for Font Awesome CDN and then um, this is a popular host and they give you three options of including this. I'm going to copy the complete link tag and then we also need to include that here somewhere. Right, I'm going to hold Shift Alt F again. Right, it has a bunch of other attributes, integrity, cross origin, referrer policy. This, this, these are basically security mechanisms. Okay, so this is all the stuff that we're going to need. I'm going to close this and refresh now and you won't see anything because we haven't included anything in the body. Let's add the HTML for this double nav bar. So we're going to have a top bar and a bottom bar. Right, and in the top bar, we have these two elements. In the bottom bar, we have a logo. We have this nav, right? So let's see, this is going to be a header. I'm going to give it a class of header, right? So I'm going to write um, the tag name. If you press tab, it will give you the complete element. But you can also say tag name and then dot header, which will give you the element, including the class, right? So it, whatever you write after the dot will be the class. That's how I'm going to write my HTML here. And then we're going to have two parts, a top bar and a, and a bottom bar. It, now, you can write div. I'm going to create a div so you can say div top bar. Right, and then the bottom bar. Now, since divs are so common, you can actually just write dot here. So you can say dot bottom bar. Now, in the top bar and also the bottom bar, you can see the content is not sitting against the edge, right? But the background color does stretch all the way, um, you know, from end to end, both in the top and bottom bar. But we want the content to be not sitting against the edge. It should, it should be a bit restrained their width, right? But the top bar itself should still stretch because of the background color and should, it should still stretch all the way. But the content in there should be restrained. So we're going to have another element here, which will be a content element. And also for the bottom uh, bar, we're going to have the same content element. right? And also, um, this is important for responsiveness because when the viewport becomes smaller, you can see it's not going to sit against the edge because this content element is going to add some padding as well, right? So that's actually uh, quite uh, important if you if you want to have a clean way of making your nav bar responsive. All right, so then here in the top bar, we're going to have a, a phone section and some kind of email section, right? Now, since the elements here are 
they are um, semantically related to each other, it's best to use the section tag here. So if we're going to have uh, a phone uh, section and an email section. Right, so here we're going to have some kind of phone. Now here we can actually use the font awesome icons. So here I would go to Google and you can Google for font awesome icons and on their website you can play around with their icons. So let's see, we need a phone icon and some kind of email icon. So I would you I would search for phone and here let's see it's this one that we're going to include they will show you the uh, HTML for that so you can copy that or you can just write it from here from my video and this is going to be the phone icon that we that we're going to use um, and then for the email icon it's just it's actually just an, an envelope I'm just going to copy this and I'm going to add that here right you can also just write the HTML yourself but I like to copy paste that. So for the phone, we're also going to have, I'm going to close this, we're also going to have the actual phone number. It can be any phone number, but we're, I'm going to wrap that in a span. And actually, um, maybe we don't even need a span. So let's, never mind about the span. Maybe if we need it later, we'll add it. So it's going to be 1-800-922-044, just a random phone number. Um, and then for the email, info at cloudservices.com, just a random company name. And if we need to style this further, we're going to wrap that in a span. But for now, that's not necessary. Right, so this is all we need for the top bar. Then we're going to have the bottom bar. So in the bottom bar, we're going to have this logo. Now, typically, you want to be able to click on the logo, right? So that should be in an anchor tag. Um, so I'm going to say a.logo. That's not going anywhere for now. So then we have an image. Now, the image is actually only, only this, this uh, graphic thing this triangle, that's actually the logo image. So I'm going to say image with a class of logo underscore underscore image, right? So for the class, for these class names, I'm using BEM notation. It's part of my CSS course. It's a very clean way of structuring your CSS classes. So the source for this is logo.svg and alt, I'll just say logo. Now the text itself, we need to add ourselves. So I'm going to add a span for that logo text. And the fictional company here is called Cloud Services. Okay, now let's see what we have so far. It's one big mess, of course, but we can see that these elements are indeed added to the page. So then we need, we have some actual links here. And here is where you would actually use the nav tag because you would use the nav tag for the actual important sets of navigation. So here we have nav. And that's actually just going to be a nav tag with the class of nav. And typically the way this, these nav I, uh, links are structured is that you have a list so this would be nav list in a list you have items so then we have li.nav item and then in here you finally have the actual anchor tag so this would be the actual nav link right so quite a bit of nesting here and here we would have solutions now I need two more of these so I'm going to put my cursor here I'm going to hold shift and then up arrow key and then once these three lines are selected, I can hold shift alt down arrow key to duplicate them. So we have projects and then we also have contact. Now this last um, nav item here, this should not be a link. This should actually be a button, right? So this is going to be its own little component. Since this is going to be a hamburger menu, right? So we have this, there's going to be a logo nav and we want to create a hamburger menu here. So this is going to be a the last um, element that we need. So we have a hamburger here and in there, we're just going to have three divs that are going to be styled as bars, right? So I can, I can hold shift alt down arrow key to duplicate that line multiple times. And this is all the HTML that we're going to need. So if I refresh here, you can see it's one big mess, but that's where CSS comes in. All right. Now I don't want to keep refreshing whenever I make a change in the HTML or CSS, right? So our, or, or JavaScript. So I've installed an extension called live server. I've installed this and once you've installed it, what you can do is you can right click open with live server and it will open up the project on a new URL. I'm going to copy that, paste it right here. And now whenever I make a change in the HTML, CSS or JavaScript, it will automatically refresh for me. Okay, so let's start styling this. I'm going to make it a little bit smaller. So I'm going to go to my CSS file. And the first thing I like to do is to simply reset some styles. So I'm going to select all elements on the page. And the browsers, they, they add some margin and padding to a lot of elements and other styling as well. For example, these anchor tags, they get that blue color with an underlined list. They get these bullet points. A lot of the default styling we don't want. We want to start from a clean slate. So I'm going to select all elements on the page. I'm going to remove any margin, any padding. 
And typically people also set the box sizing property to border box, which is actually a pretty advanced uh, declaration here. You don't have to understand that right now. I have a separate video on that if you want to know more about that. But this is a very typical CSS reset. Now we also want to remove um, the default styling for anchor tags. So I'm going to select all anchor tags on the page. The color should not be the blue color. It should simply be inherited. So whatever the dominant color is on the page, just inherit that. We also don't want to have any underline. So text decoration, none. And then also we don't see it here, but it's in a list and it has bullet points, but sitting against the edge here. So it doesn't display the bullet points right now. So we want to remove those bullet points. We just, we're just going to say list style none. And I'm going to add some comments here in my CSS file, just for a little bit of structure here. Actually, this should be a reset, right? So this is just a simple reset. And then we're going to have some base styles, right? Like the background color and the font and things like that. For that, we're just going to uh, select the body element. So we're just going to say background color because right now it's just a plain white color. Typically people make this a bit, a, a bit of like a gray color. And the design trick these days is to um, put in a little bit of blue. So it's going to be a uh, hex code E eight F zero F seven. So if I save it, you can see it, it becomes a bit darker. And if you hover the color, you can see it's not a pure gray color because then it would sit all the way here. People these days add a little bit of blue in it to give it a bit of a like, cooler look. Um, I think that looks great. So uh, that's what we're doing here. So the font family that we're going to use is the one that we just linked to, which is inter. So we say font family inter. If inter is not available for any, for whatever reason, for example, maybe this fonts.googleapis.com server is, is down, then this is not going to be available. Then you can specify a backup font after the comma. So we're just going to say, pick any sans serif font that is available on the user's computer. When we do that, well, inter is available. So we see everything in inter. And I'm just going to add some um, height here because we're going to make this a fixed, um, uh, header because typically you want the header to scroll with you. So I'm just going to add like a lot of height here. We can remove that later, but just so we can scroll down. Okay. So those are just some base styles. And then we have the, uh, the actual, well, normal styles for everything else, essentially. Now we have a bunch of selectors here, right? So we have header top bar, and I just like to, you know, Let's just add all the selectors here so that we, we can get it over with. And also we have a nice uh, overview of all the selectors that are available, right? So we have dot header, then we have top bar in there. We have top bar underscore underscore content. And actually let's see top bar content. So here we then have phone and email, but we don't need to style them actually. So we don't have to select them. Uh, right now. Now what we do need is an I we need to select the icons and actually that's one thing that we forgot. So I'm going to select the icons here. Now we do need to add the icon class to both of them. Right. So you need to, you need to go into the HTML and for these icons, you need to, we have two uh, classes here from font awesome, but we're also going to add our own class just to separate our own styles from the font awesome styles. And then we're selecting that here. So then we also need bottom bar. And bottom bar content. And then in there we have the logo and the actual image of the logo and also logo text. Right, so a little bit of, of typing here, bear with me. This is the real world. Sometimes you're gonna have to do a little bit of uh, selecting in your CSS. So we have nav and then it's usually structured like this. You have a list and then in the list you have items. And then in there we have the actual links. Right, link, it should be link, not links. And then uh, we also have a button, right? So here the last one is actually a button, BTN. Okay, and then the last thing we need to add here is the hamburger and we have three bars. Right, so a bit of typing here, but um, you know, it's a pretty big component. So that's part of the game. And this is what we have right now. And this is what we want. Okay, now you can see initially the hamburger should not be visible. Only when we get to smaller viewports should we see this hamburger, right? Initially it should be hidden. So what we're going to do here, um, and we haven't styled the bars or anything, but it's going to mess up the layout um, if it's still uh, part of the the uh, 
the layout itself. So we don't want it to be part of the layout initially. It should, it should simply be removed. So we're going to say display none and we'll make a display block on smaller viewports, right? But that will be for later. Let's add the, the background colors that we're going to need. So the top bar is going to be slightly uh, lighter gray than the bottom bar. So let's go to top bar and we're going to add the background color. It's going to be RGB. I'm not sure why I'm using RGB here instead of hex code. It doesn't really matter. 39, 44, 51. And that will give us a uh, grayish color. And again, it has some blue in it, right? It's not pure gray because pure grays, it makes the, the website look a bit plain with a bit of blue in it. It just, it just looks better. It makes it look a bit cooler. This is a design trend these days. So then we have the bottom bar and we can say background color and also RGB here can be 19, 22, 26. Right, so this is a bit darker and it actually makes it a bit difficult to read the text in there. So let's actually dial the logo, logo text. Let's start there. So we have logo, logo image and logo text. So this logo text should simply get a white color. So in, in CSS, that's just hex codes and six Fs. But if the last three are the same as the first three, you can leave off the last three. Font size, right? I can write font S and it will suggest font size for me. So I can press tab. So I'm not, I don't have to write out the entire property name every time. Font weight, I can write font W, press tab, and it's going to be 500. And then I like it. I like for the logo text if they are a little bit closer to each other, the letters. So I can say letter spacing, negative half a pixel. Okay. I'm also going to reduce the size of the image. It should be 30 pixels. So that will just make it a bit smaller. Now the image and the text, they should be uh, vertically aligned, right? So this is actually very easy to do with Flexbox. So we can say display flex. And by default, it will actually sit at the top. But then for vertical alignment, we can use align items here and we can say center, right? So this is just a little layout challenge that we quickly solved with Flexbox. But you want to use Flexbox for a lot of different layout situations as well. It's actually the go-to way of solving layout problems. And one other thing we can do, here, for example, is if we want some space between that image and the text, we can just add a column gap. Right? So Flexbox is really a powerful way of doing layouts in CSS these days. It's part of my CSS course. It's really important that you have mastered it. So this is one more reason to go through the CSS course. It takes a couple of hours, but it will benefit you for the rest of your career. Right? You can find a link in the description. Okay, so then let's also dial these, na these nav uh, links, so we can, or at least that we can see them. So we want these nav links to be a bit, uh, not completely white, but like 75% opacity. So let's see nav links. We can say color. RGBA, it's going to be white, but 0.75 opacity. And let's see if we hover them, they should be completely white. So we can say nav link in the hover state. We can copy this. I'm going to hold, I'm going to put my cursor here and then shift alt down arrow key. And then I'm going to hold alt and down arrow key to move it here. And in the hover state, it should simply be one. So now when you hover this, it becomes one. And this is the button, by the way, it will get a different color. We'll do that in a second. Now you can see it gets a white color when you hover it. Now it should be smooth. So here we're going to use CSS animations and transitions, another crucial concept. So this is actually quite easy to solve here. We can just say transition, any change in this case, it's the color property, but could also be a different property like font size or something else. Any anything that gets changed, it should happen in 0 0.2 seconds. That's right, so now it's smooth. Now. We not only want this when we hover it, but also if you click it, when you click it, it actually becomes focused and we also want to have that white color. So we can add multiple selectors. So nav link, not only in the hover state, but also in the focus state. Now, when you click it, you can see it keeps its um, hover styling or the wider color. Let's also add, let's also style the button and then we'll deal with the overall layout here. So the button should get a color of plain white, that's text color. And it should get that blue background color. So we'll say background color 0071E3. Should get some padding, 8 pixels on top and bottom, 20 pixels on the right and left side. Now to make it a pill shape, we can just give it a very large border, ra border radius, like a thousand pixels. The font size should be 12 pixels, a bit smaller because we're going to uppercase it. Because I'm going to say text T, transform. And then I only have to write U and then press tab to get the uppercase and then font weight 500 
And also for the button, what we want is when we hover it, it should get a slightly different color. So what you can do is you can select the button and hover state. Now in practice, what I would do to quickly get a hover effect, you can just copy the background color. And here what you can do is you can just quickly pick like a sm like a lighter color. Right? Usually that's all you need, right? That's what I would do in practice. Now, if you want to get the exact same color as me in the, in the tutorial, it's going to be RGB 28, 128, 228. Right, so now when you hover the button, you get that, that color. Now also this should be smooth, right? So on the, in the normal rule set, not in the hover rule set, but in the normal one, we can say transition, any change should not happen instantly, but in 0.2 seconds. All right, now before we deal with the layout here, let's also quickly style or actually give it a different color here in the top bar. So we can, actually, we can at least see all the elements. So let's go to top bar and let's do it actually in content here. So if we set the color here, it will just be inherited. So let's also make this a white color, but with some lower opacity like 0.35. Okay, and let's also reduce the font size here. Right, so I can write font S, press tab, and here it will actually be 12 pixels, so significantly um, smaller than here. And that's necessary. Let me actually zoom a little bit because I'm zoomed in here the same. Let's see, 125%, yeah. So you do want to make sure that if you have some kind of hierarchy that you de-emphasize the lesser important elements. And these are slightly less important perhaps than the bottom bar. So one way of de-emphasizing is to simply lower the opacity of the color, also making the font size smaller. That's what we've done here. Now we do want to make sure that the icon, I think that looks a bit better if the icon is a bit lower opacity than the text, right? So you can see here the icon is a bit lower opacity. I think usually that makes it, that, that's a simple design trick, I guess, to make it look a little bit better. So I just want to copy this color declaration. I can hold shift, alt, down arrow key, then hold alt to move it down, right? Alt, down arrow key. And then here the op the opacity should be let's say 17%. And also there should be some space between the icon and the text. So I can say margin right three pixels. Okay, so then we finally can work on the layout. Now layout, most of the time you want to use Flexbox. So it's crucial that you master Flexbox. If you haven't mastered Flexbox yet, definitely check out my CSS course. So let's start with the top bar here. What we want, it sits on the right side essentially, right? But they should also sit themselves on the same line horizontally. Right now they're sitting vertically. So let's start there. So what you want to do is you want to go to the HTML. You want to identify the parent element. So here we have the phone and email. The parent element is this top bar content. And what you can do is just say display flex. So if you just say display flex, they will sit next to each other horizontally. That's the default layout. Now you also want them to be vertically in the center, center, center aligned. So typically you also want to set align items to center. And that may not have a big difference here, but um, it's good to do this just to be sure. And then they should sit all the way here. That's horizontal alignment, right? So align items here was vertical. And then for horizontal, we have justify content. We could say center, for example, and they, sh they would sit in the center, right? We want them to sit at the end, right? Start is what we had initially here. That's what, that's the default. We want end, right? So then sitting at the end, and um, here they're not sitting against the edge, right? Don't worry, we'll get to that in a second. Let's deal with the layout here in the bottom bar now. So here we have the logo and then we have this nav, right? So in the HTML, we have logo and nav. They should sit next to each other on the same line. Their, their parent element is bottom bar content. So we can use the same trick. So we can go here and let's see, this is what we have now. If we say display flex, we get the default layout in Flexbox, which is that they're going to sit next to each other horizontally, right? Um, we also want to make sure that they are going to be vertically aligned. So typically you also want to set align items to the center here. Okay, that may not make a difference here right now, but it's good to have that nonetheless. And then for horizontal um, alignment, there should be space between them, right? So we have justify content and we could say end again, right? They're going to sit at the end or center, right? We want space between, right? So we have justify content for that horizontal uh, alignment. Now, of course, these items or links, of course, should also sit horizontally next to each other, right? So let's see, these items are a child element of this nav list, right? So we can go to that nav list and we can say display flex, right? You can nest them and it works as expected. There are no, there are no problems with that, right? So then you have this. Now we want some space between them. 
right? That's also easy to do. We can say column gap 40 pixels, right? And actually we want the same in the top bar. So there we can also go to, let's see. Uh, yeah, we can go to top bar content and we can also add a column gap here of let's say 20 pixels. Okay, so the, the one problem here is of course that the height of the top bar and bottom bar is not correct. And to the top bar, let's just set a height here of let's say 30 pixels. And let's give the bottom bar a height of 60 pixels. Right, so this already looks much better. Now it's really starting to look like something. Now the main problem that we have right now is that our content is sitting against the edge, right? And that's not what we want. We do want we do want the um, let's see the bottom bar, for example, to stretch all the way, but the content in the bar, bottom bar content, should be a bit more restrained. Same goes for top bar. So what you can do, for example, for bottom bar content here, is we can say the maximum width should be 1,200 pixels. Let's see what we get. So it will make the it will make it 1200 pixels at most and then we want to center it right so it, be, it should be centered in the header so one trick in css if you're using margin or max width is to use margin auto this has nothing to do with flexbox but you can say zero on top and bottom and then auto on left and right side and that will center it right we want to do the same for the top bar content so you can just copy these two declarations of max width and margin auto go to top bar content and just paste it there we get the result that we want now we still have one problem here which is that if we make the viewport smaller eventually it will sit against the edge again so what you also want to do is you want to give these um, content elements some padding on the side so we'll say zero on top and bottom and 30 pixels on the right and left side so now when you make the viewport smaller um, at least in the top bar you can see it's not sitting against the edge right we want to do the same for the bottom bar so i'm going to copy this padding go back to bottom bar content and also add that here so now we have a, actually we actually already have a quite responsive nav bar double nav bar because it wants it against the edge right so this is actually already very nice looking for a lot of devices most devices out there right we'll work on mobile in a second but this is already starting to look like something now let's also make our header complete header fixed so that it scrolls with us if we scroll down so let's go to the header here and we can simply say position fixed now, when you do that, you'll run into an issue where it's not 100% width anymore. So you need to go back to the header and simply set width to 100% again. So then it will look like before and then it will scroll with us, right? Now, one problem with this is if you have some content here, for example, when you say position fixed, it will it will shift upwards because position fixed, just like position absolute, it takes it out of the normal flow, meaning other elements are going to act as if it doesn't exist. So like there's a space available now, so it's going to move upwards if you have content here. So the, the way to combat that, to push everything down again, is to just add some padding to the top of the body, let's say. And ideally, it's the same height as this complete header. Right? So we have 30 pixels and 60 pixels, so that should be 90 pixels in total. That will shift everything down again, and actually the header itself as well. So that should not happen. So the header should stay at, should stay at 0 pixels from the top. Right? So we're going to say top 0. So then the header is still at the top, and will scroll with us, and all the other content has been pushed down again. Right? So that's how you can properly make a header fixed. Okay, so then we are ready to make it responsive for mobile. So I'm going to go right-click, inspect, and the way to do that, let's go to the example here. So if we look at the example, what should happen is that if we make the viewport, right? So this is called the viewport. This is the visible area of the web page. It does not include the address bar, right? This is all the browser stuff. The scroll bar is also not included. It's just what we see off the website. It's different from the screen resolution, right? Screen resolution here is everything. It's my complete monitor. The viewport is only what we see on the of the website, and that's what you deal with when you make it responsive. Right? So when the viewport get, becomes smaller, we want to change something at some point because if we continue making it smaller, it's gonna it's gonna clash here. So the way that we're gonna do this here is with a hamburger menu. So at let's say 650 in the example here, we should get these three bars, right? And if you click on them, well, it should it should, it should have a pretty cool like um, slide in animation. So let's see how we can do that. So let's go to our project here. Right, so right now nothing is happening. And if, if we let it like this, it's going to look horrible on, mo on mobile. So we need to change it at some point. So we need to pick a break point. doesn't really matter what it is. I'm just going to pick 650 here because it's a nice round number, but could also be 651. That doesn't really matter. So then at the bottom of our style sheet here, we're going to have some media queries. 
So we're going to do something on small devices, right? So when the viewport is small, meaning, for example, when the max width is at most 650 pixels, right? maybe you want it to be slightly smaller. But when on small devices, we're going to have to change things a little bit. So what we want is let's, you can ignore the hamburger for now. It's a separate thing, right? So this hamburger, um, these three bars and hamburger, it's, it's completely separate from the nav here. These are two separate things. So we can just ignore the hamburger for now. Right now, the, the nav is sitting like this, right? But it should actually become a vertical flow instead of horizontal. Horizontal right now. It should become vertical and should sit below the logo uh, part, right? So let's just try doing that. On, but only on 650 and smaller, right? So it should be in this media query. You can see this as like a mini style sheet, only applicable when this condition holds. So only on small devices. Are we going to make the nav a bit of a different layout? So we have nav here and we also have the nav list, which is the, the flex container. Let's see how we can do this. This is actually a bit advanced. You don't have to completely understand everything what we're going to do here. But what we're going to do is we have the bottom bar here. In the bottom bar content, we have the, the, the logo and the nav. So we need to pull the nav out of here. So I'm, I've selected the nav here and we're also going to make this position fixed. And we're gonna say it should sit 90 pixels from the top. And let's just start there actually to see what we get. So then we sort of um, pulled it out of here, but it looks terrible now. So we're also gonna give it the same background color of the, the bottom nav, right? So it's gonna be 19 RGB, 19, 22, 26. So let's see, let me make it a bit uh, wider. So it has the same background color now. Now the width should be 100%. So then it looks like this and should sit here initially on the left, let's say zero pixels from the left. So I can just do that after top. Right. So then we have this and now we're going to add some padding. 10 pixels on the top, zero on the right and left side and 25 pixels on the bottom. So then we have this. Now it should be a vertical flow here, right? Not horizontal. So then we have to use flexbox here. So we can say nav list flex direction initially this is a row this is the default we're going to set it to column now and so we get a vertical flow now this should sit in the center right so to center here it's a little bit tricky but when you use flex direction column it sort of flips in flexbox so now we have to use align items to center it horizontally right align items initially is for vertical alignment but now it switches because of flex direction column. So we have to use it for the horizontal uh, direction now. Okay, and then we have this, and now we want some gap between them, right? So we actually just have row gap. We can set it to something like 20 pixels and you get a nice uh, vertical flow here, right? Now also you can see here in the example, the text is a bit smaller. I think that looks better as well, right? On smaller devices, usually you want the, you want the font size to become a bit smaller. So we're gonna say nav link font size 14 pixels. And also for the button, we're going to set the font size to 11 pixels, a little bit smaller. And we're also going to reduce the padding a little bit. So 7 pixels on top and bottom and also 17 pixels on the right and left side. That's a bit of typing, a bit of work. But now you can see it looks the same as here in the example. Now on wider viewports, we still have this horizontal layout, right? It's only on smaller devices that we're going to get this. Right now, what we also need to do is that the hamburger menu becomes visible, right? Because right now hamburger is display none, but on smaller devices, it should not be display none. It should actually be visible. So we have to say display block on smaller devices, right? So make sure you have this. Now we don't see anything yet because we haven't styled these bars yet, right? So we don't have any bars, but at least it's going to be visible. So make sure you have this display block for hamburger. So then we can actually style those bars to be actual, uh, to actually look like a hamburger menu, right? So those are these three bars. We'll deal with the entire animation in a second. But to create those bars, we're gonna make them all two pixels tall, a background color of white, and actually the width should be 27 pixels. When you do that, this is what we get. There should be some space between them as well. So we're gonna say five pixels on top and bottom and zero on the right and left side. Now. If it's pure white, I think it looks a bit strange. So to blend it in a little bit, I'm gonna reduce the opacity a little bit. This is what we have so far. Now, what we want is that, let's see. Initially, the we're gonna have two separate animations actually. So here in the example, um, initially, it's gonna look like this. And only when you click on the hamburger, two things happen actually. So the hamburger bars themselves, they are animated. And then this 
uh, nav itself is animated. So there are basically two animations that get triggered on this click. And those are two separate animations, right? So you have to think of them separately. So what we want is initially this nav is sitting here on the left side, sort of waiting for us to click this. And once we click this, it should slide in to the right. So what we can do is we can say this nav initially should sit all the way to the left. Right, so we can say we, we should use transform here because this is a good property to animate. It's very smooth in browsers. We can do what we can do with this property is we can rotate elements, we can skew elements, we can scale elements, we can also move them. So we can move an element horizontally to the left. We can use a negative number like negative 200 pixels and it gets moved to the left, right? Now it should it should move a little bit more to the left. So let's try 500 pixels. Now it's still not completely here. So the cleanest way of doing that is to simply say 100%. So percentage in here means its own size. So if you do a negative 100%, it's just going to be perfectly uh, to the left, right? So then we don't see it anymore. And then when we click here, what's going to happen is we're going to reset this. So then the translate X should be zero again, right? No movement. So it's, it's, it, will, it will be animated. Right, so let's actually try making that work. So now we're going to write some JavaScript. So on the click here, right, so we have to hook into a click event that happens on the hamburger menu. So we say const hamburger L. I like to append L to my variable names if we're selecting an HTML element. And then we have document query selector. And then it's dot hamburger. Don't forget the dot. And then we want to do something with the nav. Right? We also need to select the nav L. And we can say document query selector dot nav, right? So then when there is a click on the hamburger L, so we're going to say add event listener click. We want to run this function here. So here we need to, let's see, we need to undo this transform, right? Because this is the reason it's sitting all the way to the left, right? We're going to make it 0% or 0, so it will sit here. Right, but initially it's going to be negative 100%. So it's sitting here waiting for us. So now I like to, you know, I mean, not just personally, but in general, it's better to use classes to add or remove a class if you want to, if you want to uh, manipulate the CSS from your JavaScript. So I'm going to add another section here for JS. So what we could add to the to the nav is another class here called nav uh, dash dash open. And this will simply be this transform declaration with 0%, right? And here it's actually a good use case for the important rule. Typically you want to shy away from this because you're sort of interfering with the, with the logic of how styles are applied. So it becomes a bit messy if you use it all over the place. But here it makes sense because here we want to add this class and it should actually override this class and it should always happen, right? So this is actually like... A good use case for the important rule. So what we need to do is when we click on the hamburger, we should add this class. So on, in this click event, we should say navl class list. You can remove and add classes here. So here we want to add a class and the class is called nav dash dash open. Right. So if we save this and try it out. So now if I click here, you can see the, the nav is back. But it happens instantly, right? So if I refresh and click on the hamburger, it happens instantly. It's not smooth. Right? So to make it smooth, we can go to the nav and let's see. We can say, because we're animating the transform property, so we can say transition. We could say transform or just all. Any property that gets changed shouldn't happen instantly. It should happen in, let's say, 0 0.3 seconds. Right. And what you can also specify after that is a so-called timing functions. There are some default timing functions here. So for example, it could go uh, very slow in the beginning and then faster towards the end or very quick in the beginning and then faster to uh, and then slow towards the end. Here we want to pick the, the one that's in between, ease in out. Um, when I click here, I'm going to refresh. Initially it's hidden, right? If I click here, it nicely um, animates in right now when you click again it sh it should be removed again right this class should be removed again um, and so we want to say class this dot remove now there's another method here called toggle when you add and re when you want something to, to be added and then removed and then added again if you click again that's called toggling right so we also have toggle here so if you change that into toggle and then click and click again it's it, you're you're toggling it right and you get a very clean smooth all right so that's one part of the animation here we also want to animate the bars here so if you look at these bars when you click on it well the middle bar gets removed and the other two sort of rotate and also they move a little bit so let's see here in the css what we're gonna do here 
is on a click, we're gonna add another class here to the hamburger. We're gonna call that hamburger dash dash open. And when that gets added, we can we can style those uh, bars. So we're gonna say hamburger open. When it's open, select the bar that's the first child, the first bar, and then also the other two. So when the hamburger open is open, select the second bar as well, and then also the third bar. So the, the middle bar should simply get an opacity of zero, right? It should simply be removed. And the other one, the first one should be rotated a little bit and also moved, moved down a little bit. So we can say for movement, we can translate Y seven pixels down and then rotate by 45 degrees. And then the third child should be the same actually, but the opposite. So you can just copy this and just add negative numbers here. So negative seven pixels and negative 50, 45 degrees, right? So now we just need to add this hamburger open class when we click on the hamburger. So you can just put your cursor here, shift alt down arrow key, and then it's the hamburger um, element that should get a, a certain class toggled. And the class is called hamburger open. Right, so make sure you change that. So it's toggle, hamburger open, hamburger L. Right, so let's see what we get. So now if I go back to our project here. You can see we have this animation here, but it happens instantly, right? It shouldn't happen instantly. It should have a nice smooth um, transition. So we can go to these bars because it's the bars that actually get animated, right? We're selecting these bars. So we can simply say transition 0 0.3 seconds, and it's going to be the ease in out timing function, right? So make sure you add this to make it smooth. Once you've added this, let's go back. And now we get a very cool, smooth um, animation for our hamburger menu. And we have a very nice double nav bar, including hamburger menu, including it being fixed, right? So this is pretty advanced stuff. You don't have to understand everything, especially with the hamburger menu. And you have all these classes um, with these bars and, and things like that with JavaScript. It gets a bit pretty complicated. But it's really important as a web developer that you have mastered these underlying fundamentals. Those are both CSS as well as JavaScript. So make sure you master them. You can find links to my courses in the description. All right, now one final thing we may wanna do is on very small viewports, if we look at um, the responsiveness here, because if you look at very small devices, like smaller phones, you still could, could, could run into certain issues here, right? So the, the smallest viewport that you typically wanna support is about 320 pixels. But you can see that our top bar here runs into certain issues. So the easiest way to solve that is to simply reduce the font size a little bit. So let's say at 360 pixels. Here we could, for example, uh, reduce the font size a little bit. So we could say after the other media query, we're going to have another media query. We could say at media, when the viewport is at most 360 pixels, select that top bar content. And we're just going to reduce the font size to, let's say, 10 pixels. Right, so if we do this, you'll see that it looks nice all the way until 320 pixels. Now, maybe you actually want to center them at some point, because why are they, they shouldn't be centering at the end anymore. It doesn't look uh, that great, perhaps. So let's see, we say justify content and end, but we can also set it to center. So it's going to be more like in the center at some point, right? So it's going to be smaller and in the center, perhaps you prefer that. I think that looks great, right? So that looks really professional, really nice. And I'm zoomed in here. So it looks a bit big, perhaps in the video. This is what it would look like for a normal 100% uh, scale. I think it's look, it looks really professional and um, it's suitable for a wide range of applications and websites and all sorts of industries. So enjoy and let me know what you think in the comment section and check out my courses. The links are in the description. By the way, if this was helpful, I'd really appreciate it if you could like and subscribe. Also, check out my courses on CSS and JavaScript if you want to take those skills to an advanced level. Because in there, we will build some beautiful, real world projects from scratch so you can see how everything fits together and really master CSS or JavaScript. And I will also release other courses soon like React and Node.js. So if you want to be notified, then make sure you are subscribed to the email newsletter. You can find the link in the description. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you soon.